and today I am going to share with you some of my favorite young adult books. I thought over the next couple of months I would do some videos that kind of help you get to know me and my reading tastes a little bit better. So I'm sure that eventually I'll do some uh, book tags, but right now I'm going to do a little mini series called Always Reread. And my first category of Always Reread is young adult fiction with a couple of adult fantasy books thrown in because I don't have a ton of favorite adult books, so I thought I would just lump them all together. Um, now, a fun fact about me is that I don't actually keep most of the young adult books that I buy. Um, I have a limited amount of shelf space, and so I tend to first check out YA books from the library. And also, when I do buy books, if I need more shelf space, my YA shelf is one of the first places I go to get rid of books. Most of the books that I keep are books that I just really love, um, books that have sentimental value to me, or books that I think are going to be useful. So I keep the classics that I buy, I keep the literary contemporary fiction that I buy because a lot of times I find myself pulling those off of my shelf to either reread or to use in a class or something. So the books that I have on my YA shelf are either books that I haven't read yet and are new or they're books that I've read and I've decided they're kind of worthy for the shelf. So to be honest, I could just talk about the shelf, but I'm going to highlight just a handful of books and authors that I particularly love. Um, and these are books that I reread. I read reread a lot of books, um, and that's kind of how I judge my favorites. What are the books that I go to when I am super stressed out at school, or I'm just tired and I want a familiar story? What are those books? So included in this pile are a couple of stories that are new to me. They're so new that I haven't had time to decide if they're going to be books that I actually reread, but I think. I suspect that they will be. I think I only have one or two. The rest of them are books that I have read dozens of times, uh, literally in some cases. So that's enough talking about the books. Let's talk about the books. Um, first are three young adult books that are older. They're not old enough to be considered classics, but for me they are personal classics. These are books that I have been reading since I was in middle school, I think is the case for all of them, or maybe even earlier and I just love these books. So the first book is uh, A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle, and a lot of people are talking about this right now because the movie came out this month. I'm not sure if I'm going to see the movie or not. I'm hearing mixed reviews, and I this book is just so special to me. I don't, I don't really want to see a movie that's meh. So anyway, if you don't know, this book is about Meg Murray, and Meg is a high school student. She feels awkward and out of place. Her parents are really brilliant scientists. So Meg's father is a physicist and he was working on this secret government experiment and disappeared. And it's been two years. And then her younger brother, who is kind of a child prodigy, his name is Charles Wallace, he tells Meg that he has met some friends who are living in the abandoned house down in the woods and brings Meg to meet them. These women are the Mrs. W's, Mrs. Witch, Mrs. What's It, and Mrs. Who, and they're celestial beings who have come to help Meg and her brother Charles Wallace and their friend Calvin rescue Meg's father. And then they go on this really cool um, space adventure, and I appreciate Meg more and more as I get older. And anyway, this and the whole time quintet, the five stories that are related to Meg and also her her daughter is the last one? Yeah. Um, are just books that I have read over and over and over again for as long as I can remember. The next book I want to talk about is Madeline Langle's A Ring of Endless Light. This is a book in a contemporary series of Langle's called just like loosely the Austin series because it's about the Austin family. This is a normal contemporary book. It has no weirdness in it. Um, and this is about Vicki Austin specifically and her visit to Seven Bay Island while um, her, her family, except for her father who has to work, is there to help her grandfather die. He has terminal cancer and they're just going to kind of stay with him until he passes. The story actually opens with another funeral for Commander Rodney who died in a shipwreck 
And so the book is definitely uh, kind of thinks about death and dying and illness, um, but it also is about Vicky. She's 16, she's starting to think towards college, she's definitely at this place where she's growing up, she's not a kid anymore, and she's trying to also figure out um, love. What, what is love, romantic love, family love, um, just understanding relationships and working through that is another part of this story. So Vicky um, has these these friendships and kind of casual relationships with three boys. She's not like a player or anything, she just knows these three boys and they ask her out on dates, but she doesn't, like, she's not in a relationship with any of them. And she likes all of them for different reasons and is kind of just trying to figure out what kind of guy that she wants. And all around, I just really loved the story for its thoughtfulness. I identified with Vicky in that she is a writer and someone who reads a lot and I really like the story and just the, the kind of big thoughts that it grapples with. Um, as a spoiler and just in case you don't want a really sad book, this isn't a really sad book. It ends on a very nice note and also Vicky's grandfather doesn't die during the story. Okay, so the next book that I have just been loving since forever is called Crown Duel by Sherwood Smith. Um, this is actually a duology. There's a second book in this volume called Court Duel. So Crown Duel is about a girl, Meliara, who with her twin brother promised her father on his deathbed that they will do something about the greedy king that's currently taxing them all to death. But they have this tenuous claim to the throne through their mother, who is also dead, and so they declare war on the king. And it's it's actually, it's like a really stupid idea. And they pretty much fail miserably. Um, the king sends a couple of nobles with the army that's fighting against them, and their number one enemy is Lord Chevraith. And then Mel gets captured by Chevraith. And it goes from there. Um, the second book, Court Duel, takes place after Crown Duel, and I won't talk about it because the whole premise is a spoiler, but I really loved the story. It has a great like romance that just has a really slow build through both of the stories. Um, Mel has this just great like fierce girl fighting personality. She's the leader of between her and her brother. Um, and there's a great magic system in this. The trees are magic. The hill folk are kind of this like tree spirit dryad kinds of people and there was some kind of war and the people of the kingdom decide, uh, agree to not cut down any trees and so the hill people give them f like fire sticks that are magic um, and light these fires. Uh, eventually Mel figures out that she also has some potential for magic uh, although magic has kind of been like shoved aside in the kingdom, it starts to come back. Um, the ending of the court duel is great with the magic. So this has just been a great book, and um, I love it. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this again <laughs> real soon now that I've been talking about it. So those are three of the books from ye olden days. Uh, the next group of books I'm gonna talk about I think are the adult books. So. These are adult fantasy books that just didn't fit into, they're not classics, but I don't have enough of them to make one whole video, so they get to go here. Um, the first of these books that I reread all the time is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. You probably know what this is about. Um, if you don't, it's about a circus. It shows up without warning, nobody knows when it's coming, and it uh, only is open at night, so it's open from sunset to sunrise and everybody loves it's just like this magical place everything's in black and white um, the, all the tents it's like a not your kind of like circusy kind of circus it's it's more like a, a field of wonders and the story is about the creators of the circus a guy and a girl Celia and Marco who were raised by competing magicians and they were raised and taught magic uh, and the in this competition to the death and the circus is their magic kind of playing field so they are constantly trying to outmatch each other in their magic and everything is going great until they fall in love and then things get kind of complicated. Um, I love this book so much. I love the writing. I love the narrative style. It's told out of order um, so we jump around 
over the course of like 30 years or something. Uh, this is a place I would just, I would love to go here where they should make a movie or something. I don't know, I want to see it. And so anyway, The Night Circus, ah, oh, so much happy. I just read it occasionally because I love it. This is a newer series and I stumbled on it and it's a book that I, I put off, like I kept looking at it and I thought it looks really interesting and then I wouldn't get it. Finally I got it and oh my goodness I love this series so much. So this is a trilogy, um, the All Souls trilogy by Deborah Harkness and the first book is called A Discovery of Witches. So this book is kind of like a speculative fiction world um, which imagines that in addition to humans there's three other kinds of races that exist on earth. There are demons, D-A-E-M-O-N-S. Um, that have special giftings, they're kind of like um, savants or prodigies, and then there are vampires, and then there are witches. Diana Bishop is from an old family line, actually her both of her parents are from um, well-respected American family lines of witches, and she, but her parents died when she was seven, and so she was raised by her aunt. She's kind of a failure at magic. <laughs> even though she's supposed to, like, everybody expected her to be this very powerful uh, witch, but she's not. She's really bad at magic. Um, and then she discovers a book. So Diana becomes an academic, and she studies, um, like, medieval and renaissance science and alchemy. And she's looking at medieval manuscripts, and she calls up this manuscript at the Bodleian in Oxford, and it's a really strange manuscript, and she can tell that it's a magical manuscript. But she's not doing the magic thing, so she just sends it back to the library. And then, turns out that everybody wants the book, and she's getting all these conflicting stories about what the book is, and she's not sure who to trust. And one of the people that is interested in the book is a vampire named Matthew Claremont. Now, Matthew is a scientist. He is ridiculously brilliant. Um, of course, he's good looking. And uh, he's also a vampire, and Diana is always been told her whole life, you, like you can't trust vampires, but she finds herself falling in love, and the story kind of goes from there. This this particular book, The Discovery of Witches, was Harkness's first book, and it reads like a first book, so it's not necessarily like I, I five star love this book, but it's maybe not a five star read. Um, there's some unevenness in the plot and some unevenness in the characterization, but she gets better as she goes on and by the time you get to the Book of Life, it's just like, amazing! Um, the other thing I really love about this story is just the characters. They're all so vivid and realistic and I really love them. And a lot of times I find myself rereading these just because I want to hang out with the people. Um, this is a book that I haven't reread yet because I haven't had it long enough. And that is The Thinking Woman's Guide to Real Magic by Emily Croy Barker. Nora Fisher is an academic, can you, can you see a theme here? Um, working on her dissertation, or actually not working on her dissertation, and she just is in a rut. And she goes to a wedding that she doesn't really want to go to, and it's in, in the woods near Asheville, and she gets lost and falls in with a group of fairies. And that's only the beginning of the story because she gets rescued from the fairies. You don't want to be a mortal caught up with the fairies. She gets rescued from them by a magician whose name is Aruindio. And he is one of those dark, glowering sort of figures. He reminds me a little bit of Snape from the Harry Potter series, but nicer. Um, but just that like closed off, not interested in anything, but he starts to teach her magic. And the story is really just kind of about her figuring out how to get home and about her adjusting to living in this world which is much more medieval and she as this like very highly educated, very con modern woman is, is kind of like just has to understand how to exist in a world where there are different expectations for women. So I really liked the story. The world was really nicely fleshed out. It um, was a very kind of intimate character fantasy, not like a big gigantic scope story. So it was really focused on Nora and Arundiel and her experiences. It it just felt kind of different from a lot of the fantasies that I have read recently and so I liked it a lot. Okay guys, so this video is getting really long, I just realized, and so I think I'm going to break it up into two videos. 
So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video.